Tamika has been recognized as one of the 50 most influential people of the Midlands by Columbia Business Monthly Magazine for multiple years and has been elected three times by the readers of Free Times as the best city county council person. Tamika's contributions to the community are further expressed through her work with her church, Brooklyn Baptist Church, and her sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Inc. Tamika is a graduate of Spring Valley High School, Hampton University, and the University of South Carolina School of Law. She is a founding partner in the law firm of Jabber and Isaac, PA. It's so great to be here this evening with you guys or this afternoon. We have had an amazing day, some amazing speakers, and I'm, I feel incredibly honored to be able to have be on this stage uh, with the great thought leaders that you've heard from. So I'm going to share with you a little bit more to kind of help you as you think about your mindset and then put your mindset into action to live the life that you want to live, the life that you desire and the life that you deserve. As mentioned in my bio, I'm Tamika Isaac Devine. I am a work-life integration strategist. Most people are like, well, what is that? And I'm going to tell you, I'm also someone who talks about women's leadership, but not just women's leadership, but leadership in general, because we're all leaders. We're all born to be leaders, to leave a legacy. We just got to tap into what that is. So I'm going to talk a little bit about work-life integration. So do any of these things sound like you? Do you feel guilty about your family activities that you miss because you're working long hours or you're doing other things? I see Barbara put a hand up, some hands up. Anybody feel guilty? How about do you have no time for date night with your spouse or significant other because you're running from place to place doing community activities or doing things with your kids? How about that? All right, date night is important, so I have to make sure. How many of you don't feel like you have time to network because there's not enough hours of the day just to even accomplish the things that you feel like you have to do within your company? So I'm going to tell you, that was me for a long time. You know, I am an attorney, practicing attorney. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I'm a former elected official. And I had so many responsibilities. I was constantly working and running. And people would say, well, wow, you know, Tamika, what, how do you get work-life balance? And I will tell you, I was constantly trying to figure out work-life balance and achieve it because I felt like, well, gosh, I'm a high-achieving woman. I'm a professional. Everybody's like, you know, Tamika, how do you get work-life balance? I figured they must think I haven't worked out. And I kept trying to get to work-life balance. And then I realized something. Work-life balance is unachievable. It doesn't exist. Balance means you have equal things and you're keeping them back. And so, so many people have taught us, you know, we need to have a work-life balance. And when you're not achieving that, you feel like you must have failed. What am I doing wrong? You know, I, I make good money, I have a good job, I'm a leader, but I don't feel like I'm constantly there for my family when they need me. Or I'm doing all this stuff at home, and so I feel like I can't put in the extra hours at work. And that young 20-something-year-old who doesn't have kids, who doesn't, isn't married, and they're working long hours, I feel like, okay, I've got to compete with them, and I have to do that. So you feel like there's trade-offs. But the reality is there's always trade-offs. And because we're trying to find work-life balance, we feel like we're failing. And that is because society, that's what they've taught us. So we're going to take a little trip down memory lane and talk about how society or what they've taught us about work-life balance. And those of you who might be millennials or Gen Zers might not necessarily know the people in here. When I give this, it dates me because I'm like, okay, I remember these folks. But who remembers June Cleaver and Florida Evans? All right, okay. So, you know, growing up watching uh, Leave it to Beaver and, and Good Times, you know, you had, you know, the stay-at-home mom who made sure when the kids got home, food was cooked, they could help with homework, they were, you know, doing all the housework and everything. And that's what society taught us for a long time. You know, to be that successful, you know, powerful mom, you needed to stay at home and then that way be there for your kids. 
But what that told so many folks when we started needing to work outside of the home or even wanting to work outside of the home is that when you have kids, you might fail as a mom if you're not going to be able to be there. But that's not something that we need to embrace. And then we're going to move on past them. And how many of y'all remember this one? I can put the wash on the line, feed the kids, get dressed, pass out the kisses, and get to work by five and nine. Because I'm a woman, Anjali. Give her Anjali, the eight-hour perfume for your 24-hour woman. You could bring home the bacon, fry it up in the pan, and then never let your husband forget he's a man. How many people remember that one? So that was like, okay, we evolved into, you know, you could still work outside the home, but then you were still, you know, expected to come home and cook and then be, you know, the wife um, that was performing her wifely duties. Uh, And then we evolved into, you know, one of my favorites, especially as an attorney, you know, then you had Claire Huxtable, you know, the powerful lawyer who's the partner in her firm. Uh, She had, you know, the mom, the friend, she was always flawless, makeup done, great suits. Uh, And then she she always gave sage advice to her kids that were always resolved within 28 minutes. You know, is that reality? Yeah. And then, of course, I'm not going to leave the dads out. You know, how many remember Mr. Mom? You know, uh, the, the dad who unfortunately ended up losing his job but was home, but then he didn't know how to change diapers. He didn't know how to turn on the vacuum cleaner. You know, he had all these issues. And, like, how many dads in here, like, do you, is that reality? I mean, dads know how to change diapers. Dads are doing the, the job just as much as wives. And we had society telling us this was what we needed. And so we had so many things that society was telling us that we needed to do all this stuff to have work-life balance. And then, of course, COVID-19 hit, and that took work-life balance into a whole different direction. You know, we became uh, coaches and teachers and therapists and entertainers. I mean, you were doing everything. And so that really skewed us on work-life balance. So what I want to people to understand is that, again, work-life balance may not uh, exist, but we do have work-life integration. And work-life integration is really about finding synergy between your professional and your personal life, understanding that it's allowing you to be your true self, and you don't have to sacrifice your, the goals that are important to you. You have to understand what is important to you. I remember when I first uh, got elected, I was single, no kids. I got married. I started having children. I had my first child who, uh, speaking of work-life integration, she's now 16 and, and working for me. So she's here taking pictures and things. Um, but I had my first child, and people were like, well, I'm, I'm sure you're not going to run for office anymore. I'm like, well, why am I not going to run for office anymore? You know, and they said, because you're, you know, mom, you need to stay home with your kids. And I realized, no, that's not going to happen. What we do is what we, we can tell people stuff. And what, like one of the other speakers said, but what we model, what we show, what our life shows them is more. And what I show my children all the time is that I can be very successful professionally, but you are a part of it. You are my why. So think about what is your why? Discover why do you work so hard? Why are you uh, building a business, a six, seven, eight-figure business uh, to leave that legacy? Yeah, the money is good. The titles are great. The power is good. But what is your real why? And most people I understand their real why is about the legacy that they would leave, about their children. What are they telling and showing their children about success? And so I always tell people, you have to understand that seven levels deep. Ask yourself, why do you do what you do? And it's very clear for me. Why I do what I do is because of my children, because of my husband, because of my community. I work hard in my community as an attorney, as an elected official, as a community leader and a champion, because I want people to understand that having it all, you can have it all. It just might mean, what is all to you and why do you do what you do? And so... I am going to today give you permission to let your priorities drive your actions. How many of us have examples of things that we do every single day that are other people's priorities? They're not really what you want. And so what are your priorities? And let that drive yourself. So in my next five minutes, I'm going to really go through real quick 
Um, I know I can't dive deep into a lot of these, but I'm gonna drive real quick some real key life, work-life integration tips. You know, because again, if you can't have work-life balance, you certainly can have work-life integration. So first of all, you wanna select or set your priorities that reflect your values. You know, what are your values? You know, what's important to you? Is it building a business so that you are financially free and so you can invest that money into your community? Support nonprofits and causes that are important to you. Is it that you're working and being able to support your family so that you can take a month-long vacation and really spend time with your kids? Is it having those not just monthly date nights, but your weekly date nights with your spouse? Because, and you know that you, you have to do certain things, but you have to take that time out to spend that quality of time with the person that you love. And so making sure that you are making those priorities. And so when you set your to-do list, and I love what Jillian said earlier about delegating and having things out, set your to-do list. And I will tell you, once you set your to-do list and you prioritize your list, you need to divide your things into your must-do, your should-do, and your nice-to-do items. And I'm going to tell you that out of those, there will be lots of things that you can delegate to other folks. There are lots of things that actually probably are things that you don't really need to do. And then there'll be things that don't really reflect your priorities or values, but they reflect someone else's. So understand what your priorities are and let your activities that you do every single day be driven by those things. Then you want to plan your work and work the plan, which I plan out everything. I think someone said earlier about scheduling. I schedule my days. And in my schedule, you know, when you look at my calendar, you're going to see date night on there. You're going to see the dates that I have with my children. You're going to see a spa day. You're going to see that quality girls night with my friends because it's important that you also have your circle of people around you and that you lift them up and they lift you up. And so you have to spend that time. So my schedule will have those things. And it's driven by my priorities. So when people call me and say, hey, Tamika, it'd be great. We really need you to do X, Y, Z. One of the things I say, well, let me, let me look at my priorities. Let me look at my schedule. If this isn't on my priorities, it doesn't deserve to be on my schedule. Then tip number two, limit time-wasting activities and people, okay? And people. How many of y'all have people that you know that, you know, they just come around and you're like, oh, I can't believe I can't get those 10 minutes back. <laughs> I mean, really. You know, I mean, it's, you don't want to be mean to people, but there are folks that you don't need to be around. There are, you know, there are activities you don't need to be doing. So don't limit, don't waste your time on activities or people that really are not worth your time. If they're not building into you, if they're not um, pouring into you, if they're not uplifting what you have, uh, then maybe they should not necessarily, they don't deserve that amount of your time. Surround yourself with like-minded individuals. And Stephen talked about this, about having friends that are, are you, you look at your friends and you can tell what you're going to be when you're surrounding yourself about folks. I love this quote, behind every successful woman or man is a tribe of other successful women who have her back. You know, I have a circle of folks that I know no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm doing, they're going to understand and they're going to have my back no matter what. You know, Stephen talked about me running for office. I served 20 years as a council person, and then I ran for mayor. I came up just short this time, but I'm going to tell you, I had a successful group of folks who poured into me and helped me realize that the lessons I learned through my run for mayor actually have positioned me for my next. So you want those folks who are not going to come in and, and want to you know, drink wine and, and commemorate in your misery, but you want people to say, okay, that didn't happen this time. Now what's next? So how do you keep going? And you also want to make sure that instead of multitasking, and I know lots of folks, they pride themselves. Oh, I'm a great multitasker. I can do this and this and this and this. But what you realize is when you're multitasking, your energy is not focused on what you really need to do. Something that should have taken you five minutes is taking you 15 because you did other things. Um, so instead of multitasking, look at ways overlap activities. Uh, this picture here is of uh, my third child, who's now five. But when he was first born, I needed to get back. I was 44 when I had my last child. So, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but losing weight after 40 is tough. 
And losing baby weight after 40 is really, really tough. And so I had to get back into the gym, but I also wanted to make sure I was having that time with him. So I found baby yoga and mommy um, sun time to do things. So I was able to work out, but also have my time with him. Tip number six, make sure you're unplugging and spending some very quality time alone. So that could be meditation. I meditate every single morning at least 30 minutes. Uh, before kids get up, before husband gets up, before I check my phone, I'm meditating. I also have every evening, I'm spending at least 30 minutes either on the elliptical machine, taking a walk, just decompressing from the day. So make sure you're spending quality time with you. You know, it's important to spend time with folks that are important, Who's more important than you? Spend time with yourself and find that time and unplug. Tip number seven, don't compare your life to others. I will tell you, there's so many folks who look at, you know, well, this person is making tons of money or this person has this business. I should be like that. It is great to use people as a motivating factor, but remember, it's only you versus you. I don't compete with anybody else but myself. I don't compare myself with anybody else for myself because my life is different from others. And so figure out what is important to you. Every minute you spend wishing you had someone else's life is a minute that you spend wasting your own. Tip number eight, make sure you set boundaries. Learn that no is a complete sentence. Say that with me. No is a complete sentence. Set boundaries. People who will come and they will want to pull from you over and over and over again, and they will, never, um, they will never want to give because you continue to let them pull. So set boundaries. Don't acquiesce to every request that comes your way. Tip nine, make sure you're hiring your weakness. And I talked about delegating. Hiring your weakness is so important. So whether it is somebody that helps you um, get your meals together, someone who helps you uh, clean the house, someone who delegates within your office, you, there are tasks that you can delegate. Train someone to do those things so that you can spend ta time on higher tasks. And then most importantly, tip number 10 is practice gratitude. We heard this morning the importance of saying thank you there is nothing more important to your happiness and the success of your business and building your legacy than being grateful. For being grateful for every single thing that you have, whether it's something that went your way or something that may not have gone your way. Because once you appreciate things, once you show gratitude, it opens up, it sends that signal to uh, the Lord and to the universe that you are uh, welcoming more abundance into your life. So be grateful. Be grateful for that jerk who cut you off because had they not cut you off, maybe you might not have had a couple more minutes to spend in the car to just, you know, decompress. Be grateful for the folks who support you and thank you for things. But more importantly, be grateful for every single opportunity that comes your way because with every single lesson, there's a blessing. And with every single blessing, there's an opportunity for you to do greater. So with that said, um, again, I am so grateful for you for the time that you spent today. I know I only got to go a couple tips. Make sure that I, I'm always blogging and posting about different work-life integration tips. So please um, follow me on social media. I'm Tamika Isaac Devine on all social media. Uh, but stay connected and continue to remember that as you practice more work-life integration, you're gonna be happy. And once you're happy, every single person around you is gonna be happy because they're gonna see the joy that you have. So thank you all so much. Uh, God bless and make sure you are building a great legacy.